A lot of times when you're doing equations, you've got fractions mixed in, and as much as possible, I like to get rid of fractions and deal with just integers. So um, first, a quick review of how this works. When you take a number like 14 and you multiply it by 3 7 what you do is you do 14 divided by 7, which is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So you can do these in your head. They're, they're quite simple. 3 goes into negative 27, negative 9 times, negative 9 times 1 is negative 9. And then 2 into 16 is 8, and 8 times 5 is 40. So when you multiply a whole number by a fraction, that's pretty much how it works. Now, um, a lot of times you get things that look like this. So what I've got out here is a fraction, and I'm going to have to do distributive property with it. So I'm going to do what I did above just for each of these terms. So 3 goes into 12 4 times. 4 times 2 is 8. So this is 8x. 3 goes into 3 1 time. 1 times 2 is 2. And then I've got that. So once I get to this, this is pretty much your standard two-step equation from there. Um, everything else is going to work exactly the same as it does for easier problems with just integers. And I shouldn't say easier because these are actually just as easy, as long as you just do what I just did. Okay, so on this one here, I'm going to do 2 into uh, 4, which is negative 2, and negative 2 times 3 is negative 6x. And then 2 goes into 8, 4 times 4 times 3 is 12. And then from there, you pretty much do your usual stuff. Start with the additive inverse. Okay, down here. So when I, when I do these two down here, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go all the way. Uh, I've got another video on this channel on solving two-step equations. So once I get this to a two-step equation, that's really what this video is focused on, is how to get it to that point. From there on, you can look at the other video. So this is 3 into uh, 9x, which is 3, and then 3 times negative 1 is negative 3x, and then 3 goes into negative 3, um, negative 1, and then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So... Here I've got some negative stuff going on. You always got to be careful with your negatives and positives, but you can see how that worked out. And all I've got now is a two-step equation. I can go ahead and solve that as I would normally. Um, this one over here, I got 5 into 10 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6x. And then 5 goes into negative 5, negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So there you go. Now, there's another place that these um, fractions will show up. And you get something that looks like this. So it's not really with distributive property. It's just you've got fractions. Now, can we do this without doing what's called a fraction buster? I don't know if that's the mathematical term for it, but that's what I've heard. It's called a fraction buster. You can do this without doing fraction busters. Um, I've seen kids do it. Um, I personally do not like adding and subtracting fractions. So I try to get rid of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look, and in this whole equation here, I can see I've got this 4 down here. So in a case like this, what I would do is multiply the entire thing by 4. And that, don't forget to do this on both sides. So this would be 8x plus 20, and then just like we did, except it's the opposite, 4 goes into 4 one time, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3 with an x equals 0. So this would turn out like that. Then I could combine my like terms. And again, you've got a two-step equation. Uh, this guy over here, so this is a little bit different. Um, there's a 3 and a 6. So what I have to do is I have to think of a number that both go into. So it's kind of like when you're adding fractions, you need a common denominator to add them. So you, you've got choices. A lot of times kids will go, well, I'm going to use 18. Could you use 18? Absolutely. But I always do, what I do is I check to see if the small one goes into the big one. And in this case, it does. So I'm actually going to use the 6. So 3 goes into 6 twice. 2 times 4 is 8. And then 6 goes into 6 one time, and 1 times 4 is 4. And this is 36. So again, I get a two-step equation. Um, as I said before, you can do your usual stuff. Additive inverse, then multiplicative inverse, and then you're done. But this is how you handle fractions when they're in equations.